A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Ilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come, and all this is from God. God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, God was reconciling the word world to himself through Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting us to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for, for Christ. 
as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that shall come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck the country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the parts on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants quickly Bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and he has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, 
His father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I must say once again, Happy Letare Sunday. Happy Letare Sunday, or as one of my youngsters in CCOP when I was there, looked at me and said, Happy pepto Sunday. Because the color changes today. The color changes to rose color, but because rose is very hard to come by, uh, we moved it to the closer color, which is pink. That's why we wear pink on the fourth Sunday, every fourth Sunday of Lent, and every third Sunday of Advent. Eh? Every third Sunday of Advent is called Gaudete Sunday. But every fourth Sunday of Lent is called Letare Sunday. Letare is the Latin for rejoice. And that's the word that begins the official liturgical song for this Sunday, the entrance song for this Sunday begins with rejoice, rejoice. Now, how do we rejoice at a time when we are supposed to be bowed down and and crawling and doing all the sacrificial work, uh, fasting and and giving alms and, and praying more? How do we rejoice? Is it possible to rejoice and do these things? The church says, yes, and we should. And that is why we should bring that rejoicing and practicing these things. We should not practice them with pain and under duress and on that kind of inconvenience. We shouldn't make it an inconvenient practice. You shouldn't make praying more, praying more. Praying is communication with God. Why are you going to make it with pain? As if you're losing something. Why, do you, why are you going to uh, 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 give arms and sharing your blessings? Because giving, giving some people something that you have, yes, it's difficult sometimes because you are parting with something that belongs to you. Yes, but, but look at what it, what it does. What it says is that you really have something. Otherwise, you cannot give. So the, act that, the fact that you are able to give something means that you have something. It means you are already blessed. It means you already, really, you got it. So it's actually a celebration of what you have already. It's not that you are now going to get something. You're giving so you can get. No, no, no. You are giving because you already, uh, you could give. And the fact that you can give makes you know who you are, how you are blessed, and not take for granted some of the things you already have. And the fact that we are called, we are called to fast and fasting is not, is not just taking something out of your system, uh, like, like just throwing things out of, just for taking them out sake, just going away from, uh, from, 
from uh, ice cream or going away from meat or going away from food, for its it, it, it makes no sense by itself. It is for a purpose. You take away something that is not godly out of your system so that you can become empty and God fills you with God's graces that you come to know more about God. Instead of feeding on this uh, rootless internet something kind of story, maybe you now read more of the Gospels, read more of the Scriptures, meditate more, come to know more about Jesus Christ, fill yourself with Jesus, more of Jesus. There's more to know about Jesus we don't have yet. So fasting is for a purpose. It's, it's creating room in ourselves so that God will fill us. So fasting has to do with having more rather than taking out. Taking out the bad ones and filling in with good ones. And that is satisfying too. Fasting is satisfying. And so praying, doing all this work and Lent, we are called upon not to do them with pain. If you have become a friend of Jesus, if you are baptized as a Christian, you become a friend with Jesus, well, you should talk to Jesus all the time. Midnight, morning, whatever time, you should talk to Jesus. Prayer is communication with Jesus Christ. So nobody has to give you 40 days to practice that. No. This is just a way to help maybe those who cannot help themselves. But this is Christian practice itself. The things that we are doing in Lent is the normal Christian lifestyle. So nobody should say, oh my God, I, I can't wait for Lent to be over then, then, then we'll come to normal. No. Don't try to run away from these things. They are the Christian life itself and that is why the church asks us to pause anytime we are preparing to celebrate the two great feasts of the church, of the Christian life. The two great feasts are Christmas and Easter. These are the two great feasts. And anytime we prepare for them, when we prepare in Advent to celebrate Christmas, we take a moment in that preparation period to remember the fruits of that preparation, to actually bring it to bear, to marry the, the, the outcome with the practice itself and say, we don't have to just practice and go get them. No, as you practice it, you are getting it right there. You taste it. As you practice it, you will see the goodness of God, not at the end of the practice, but once you are living that life, you will already uh, uh, receive the blessings. Right there, as you practice it. In, Lent, in Advent time, it's the third Sunday when we change the color to this. Also, in, in uh, Lent, uh, Lenten time, when we prepare for Easter, the fourth Sunday, we are asked to think about Easter. Bring Easter today, to today and already taste in our fasting, in our prayer, in our giving, we should give rejoicing. We shouldn't do it with it. We can rejoice because we know that we are blessed. And that's why we have this gospel reading today, the prodigal son, we call it the prodigal son, the experts, the scripture uh, experts, have given the title to this story as the prodigal son, the son who, who took his father's property and went away and squandered the property but came to his senses and came back home. So the focus many times is placed on, the, on this younger son who went away from home and came back, realized his mistake. And, and he's supposed to teach us that that. When you do wrong, you find that you have done wrong, you are the wrong side of God's work, God's love, you should realize and come back. You should return. That's a straightforward uh, 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 thing to do. 
If you realize you are at fault, you go and apologize. You go and, and make it right and go back. We rarely think about the older son's experience, the older son's character in this gospel reading. We rarely reflect on it. And that is why not much is written about the older son. Just a little thing at the end that you see the older son's character come in. But there is something there for us. There's something there that reveals our practice today by doing, rejoicing, by doing the things of sacrifice and sacrifice our lives while rejoicing. The fact is that this older son, he could not celebrate. He could not celebrate. He couldn't go in to celebrate with the rest of the family because, because he didn't know what he has. Because he has made ordinary the things that he has already. Remember that the father, this family is very rich. The family is a very rich family. The father is very rich. This older son, he never left home. He has always been at home. He's always been in the riches. He never went away and, 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 and uh, lost all the things. He has always been in the riches. For him, it's an ordinary day. Uh, 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 a Tesla is a normal car for him. <laughs> he, 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 doesn't, he has been in here all the time. All these riches are just ordinary for him. He doesn't see any new thing around them. So he's asking his father for more. Maybe what he's asking, for lack of a better term, he's asking, Father, now uh, I want a plane. You should buy me a plane, an aeroplane. Because Tesla, what is Tesla? Tesla is <clears throat> ordinary. He has been in the soul riches. He doesn't know how much he's blessed. He is ble he's been living in this wonderful home and still looking for more and could not celebrate. This is what we are being drawn to in Letare Sunday. We are being called to realize that we are already Easter people. We are going through Lent, but Lent is not divorced from Easter joy. The joy is already here, and you can only rejoice only if you know that you are blessed. Familiarity with some of these things sometimes can make us forget that they are blessings. Just like I woke up this morning. It's a miracle. Another miracle God worked out. Just because I wake up every morning, oh, I wake up again. We, we sometimes take these things for granted. Somebody did not wake up this morning. Somebody did not feel all the health they need to come here right now and worship. But I have it. I should be able to recognize that. And thank God for it and appreciate it. And celebrate. So it can help me celebrate. You can celebrate. You cannot celebrate if you don't recognize that your life itself is a gift or it's a blessing from God. There are so many things that we sometimes may take for granted. So many blessings. So many reasons why we should celebrate that sometimes we take for granted. Like I told my school children one time, <coughs> when your mama brings you to school, uh, and you jump off the car, uh, do you say, thank you, mama? No. Sometimes uh, they, they take you for granted. I mean, oh, oh, mama, you do it again. You do it all the time. Uh, uh, yeah. No, but it's a special time. All the time, it's a special thing. It's a special thing that, that you look at yourself and you say, I have my children. I have, they can go to school. That I have a church to worship in that I have a job, that I have this, that I have that, and so on. For me, it's a blessing to me that I have, I have people who believe, who come, who come to worship, 
together that I can exercise my ministry among the people who have faith. That's a blessing to me. I, I don't want to take it for granted. I don't want to take anybody for granted. I want to always recognize and thank God for this blessing. And that will make me always celebrate. That's why I want to celebrate all the time. We should celebrate all the time, and we should see our Lenten practices as, as a joyful thing to do. When you are giving, give out of joy, not out of pain. When you are praying, do not pray, oh my God, another mass again, oh Lord, another rosary. Oh. Like somebody, somebody came to confession and I said, go pray uh, five decades of the Holy Rosary. All oh, five of them? <laughs> I got to pray all five of them. And, was, and she even asked me, do you, can, do you pray all five of them? <laughs> and I'm like, she, she said, how many minutes do you pray all five of them? And I said, I pray all five of them 15 minutes. You do that? Oh, no, <laughs> no well, I cannot do that. Okay. So I got to give, it, give it, uh, a, different, uh, a different penance. <laughs> Easier penance. It's just a, a practice that I want you to talk to your, your friend. <laughs> to talk to your friend. I have to, I have to make compromises to make you talk to your friend? Pray it shouldn't be like that. So how we rejoice and take pleasure rather, because this is who we are. We cannot not pray. We cannot not sacrifice. We cannot not give. We cannot not fast. It is the order of Christian life. And we will do that in Lent, out of Lent, in Easter, out of Easter, anytime. Lent is just helping us to remember that, to remember that and make it the order of our lives. And God will bless us that we will live this Christian life. Our relationship with God will not be by some kind of com commercial tit for tat. No, no, no. It's a loving and rejoicing celebration and, 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 and lifestyle. May God bless us. When we go to communion today, may we rejoice. May we be filled with joy to rejoice in our Christian life. Amen.